Here we go for the third time. <laughs> In the chat. Don't you know he has to wait until later to OOS a win? <laughs> That's always troll. I love the chat. They're saying everything is good, good audio. audio. Fantastic. Checking the hunts here. Looks like both players have uh, three nearby hunts to start with, which is the standard. And there should be four more hunts scattered around their side of the map. Which Absolutely. Is the case here. It does look like uh, the second mine favors dual cred. The second mine or the third mine? No, I, I guess what well, that is the the third this mine right here. Um, yeah, but the third mine is not really something. You think we're gonna, gonna see that affect the game? Yeah, no, it, uh, they both have the same amount of mines. He's saying it's lagging. Um. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Right, so this time we have dual crad spawning in the north map, color green, and Noel in the bottom, in the color red, both playing as Portuguese. Exactly. I didn't want to repeat myself three times. So. <laughs> no fun <laughs> doing that. that. <laughs> And if you see here, we see a uh, dual crab picking up a uh, villager treasure here. That's a very nice boost early on. Definitely. Do you think we're going to see him age up with uh, one less trained villager because of that? Possibly. Possibly. Um, or he could... He also has uh, the chance to get out early with a villager and, and take control of the TPs as soon as he ages up. Yeah, absolutely. He has it kind of forward, but I think he's going to bring it back to his base. Yeah, he's just going to hurt in that hunt. I'm going to pull up their decks real quick and see what we have. Doesn't look like Noel has selected his deck quite yet. I imagine it's going to be very similar to dual crads. Yeah, I would imagine both players would go for ATP here and yeah, absolutely. test the the trading post line, making their first town center along the middle somewhere, protecting one of the trading posts. I think we'll Maybe see... some musketeers or hussars early on. Hmm. I imagine we'll see gnolls drop somewhere in this area because there is a herd and a mine there. Uh, the other side, the, the herd is a little bit farther back. Dual cred picks up that 50 wood treasure. Yeah, wood treasures are really good for Portugal, especially when you're trying to get ATP and you know, that costs wood. Yep, and Dualcrad's ATP has arrived first. It has indeed. And I like that he's taking this uh, this far TP here first. I think that's a good choice. Because the middle ones are kind of easy to secure here. Noel, Noel is going for the middle one. Absolutely. I'm looking at their decks right now. There is actually a little bit of a variation in them. Uh, Noel oh, has... He's going to get that first pass. Sorry. Go ahead. I was saying Noel actually has advanced arsenal in his uh, deck while Dualcrad does not. Oh, actually I'm wrong there. They both have advanced arsenal. He has the advanced church card in his deck while Dualcrad does not. That's interesting. We'll see if it comes comes to that. Um, okay, second trading post already being taken here before the age up by dual crad. That is quite interesting. So he really wants to to secure this TP line. He he's saying right now I I'm gonna win this ATP <laughs> battle. Dual crad is doing the exact same thing here. Yeah, dual crad actually has about 25 seconds advantage on his age up. He will get there first. Yes, he will gonna be interesting to see where he's gonna place his first town center I would uh, 
suspect he would place it maybe mm, I want to say to protect this trading post but on the other hand if you look on this side of the map you see this hunt and the gold mine there which is kind of more worth protecting absolutely resources. and since these are ATP they do have 25 range attack and kind of act like outposts into themselves so gives them line of sight and to an extent map control Okay, yeah, he is choosing to go from this side. His first town center. Seems like a wise decision. I would think so, yes. And a stable coming up straight away here for for the green player. Oh, Looks one, like it is going to be some early of his heart. Yeah, and one differentiation I do see is that Noel has his market up already, while Dukrat has not even dropped his yet. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, Let's click on the villager, see if he's got, but he has not gotten anything yet. No hunting dogs, nothing. Perhaps we will when see those. When you click on the villager, uh, they actually show up. That's true, I forgot about that. What he's researched. And then uh, Noel's town center placement is... Uh, A bit more defensive. Green here, on the other side. That's just because of the resource spawn here in these bison and gold mine. Yeah, it seems like the wise thing to protect. Yeah, I mean, both players have two TPs right now, so they know all of the TPs are taken, and there's really not much more they can do with it right now. So they need to get their economy going, get some units out, see where the game takes them from there. Uh, 700 wood out for the green player. Oh, and Noel has just gotten hunting dogs, so he has gotten his market up, his first one, before uh, Dulcred has managed to get his market down. We see five Hussar coming from the north, to apparently to raid Noel. Now, thankfully for Noel, though, he doesn't have any villagers out yet yeah. in that second town center. And all of these villagers are very close to his first town center. It's really... Keeping it clean here with his hurting. Well, the actual might manage to damage or even kill that one. Oh, nope. got there just got in time. Uh, scout coming in. And five husks himself. Board. So he's actually snaring those uh, those Asar with his scout. Yeah, and he's already got damage down on uh, one of them, so he could potentially win this war. More so with his uh, explorer nearby. Mm. So green is forced to run away. Here. Granted, they will have to run through the ATP, uh, unless he goes right down the middle, so he might take a shot or two off on SSR. But Dole does stop right there, so he does not take any of that damage. I do see, see Dulcrad, he has his Explorer camped out by this Medicine Mammoth Treasure. Do you think we'll see him try to take that? That's really not something you really go for. I mean, really, to be honest, the, the XP you get from killing those guardians is worth more than that medicine, man. It's not It's not a treasure that's very common to take. And Dukrat has gotten his mark down. He did get hunting dogs, but almost a minute later than Noel did. Uh, yeah. So far, their shipment it's order has been identical. Yeah, it's interesting. Both players have gone for the 600 gold shipment. Uh, that means that they're really going to go heavy on the colonial uh, pressure with the Hussars and no now getting the barracks down. Maybe we're going to see some musketeers. Yep, Zulkar's going to get a villager kill in. That does right bring. Now it's nine Hussars to five in favor of no one. Yeah, absolutely. If he can catch us, that'd be really big. Double racks, interesting. And it does not look like Noel has uh Noel has one racks down over by his, his town center. Ooh, and we see his Dukrads, his cavalry going in, and I imagine um we're gonna see Noel bring his back and catch those. And green is up to the third age here. I, I missed some aging up there. That's really big. And all his uh, next card they played was 700 foods. I imagine we're going to see him try to mass up. 
So it looks like uh, Green is already going to transition to Dragoon as mm -hmm. Casador. And he managed to get two more villagers, so he's actually taken out three villagers, and I don't think Noel has managed to raid a single one yet. He may lose one of the Sassar from Town Center Fire. Good job using the explorer to snare those. And he has caught up to him. Uh, no one's had the army advantage pretty much all game, but he hasn't really done much with his army. You can see, as you said, Green has, is the one that has been killing villagers. And we do see uh, sh some diversion in the shipment orders. After 600 gold, Adulkar decided to ship 1,000 wood, while Noel instead shipped 700 food. Exactly, that's because uh, uh, Dulcrat aged up before Noel and could send 1,000 wood. Noel was still in the second age, so he sent 700 food to age up because he had made a lot more hussars than Dulcrat. Are you sieging down Noel's town center? Do you think he'll manage to get that down before the hussar catch up? It is possible. It is possible, but I don't think so because Minutemen being called out now. House and he catches up with those. It looks like uh, Green is going to lose all of his army here if he's not careful. Very hard to run away from, from the snare of this Hussar, but he, he's doing a, a decent job, I would say. Losing one Dragoon now. And Dukrat ships five Dragoons. And Noel does 1,000 wood. Yeah, I like uh, Noel's shipment a lot better. You, you can get a lot more out of 1,000 wood shipment than five Dragoons. Absolutely. Five Dragoons is really when, when you're down, it's more like a defensive shipment, I would say, or, or a, for a timing. So he does have a very and large gear mass. Yeah, he did try to go for some sort of a timing here, uh, but it's not really working out for him. It's kind of hard to, to catch uh, Portugal off guard here in the mirror. And looking at their text completed, both players do have steel traps and uh, placer mines, but uh, Dulcred actually has a gang saw, while Noel does not. But despite Green uh, sending military shipments, he is ahead in, in villager count here. Yeah, 43 to 35. 43, yeah, that's 8 villagers, 9 now, because he's killed one. I'm going to kill another one. This is looking very nice for Dulcred at the moment. Yeah, it actually is. It looks like he has the map control here, at least on this left side. And he's pressuring Noel uh, to the point where he can't really do anything before he masses a larger army. You can see his Dragoons and Hussars here waiting by in the back. Yeah, he just doesn't have enough mass to be able to take out all those goons and uh, the Casador. Well, these uh, units do not have the best of siege. So just give uh, Noel some time to mass up. Dukrat is ahead in both economic and military population. Uh, he, he could basically just sit back and just mass army right now. He doesn't really have to pressure him. Um, I would like to see him. That's exactly what he's going to do. Uh, take these trading posts. He can take command of the trading post line now. That is pretty wise. And we may see him uh, try to get stagecoach. Yeah, he's done enough damage to Noel here to where he can just sit back now and just take the trading post and make Noel make a play. He, he's quite comfortable here just booming, keep keep on uh, spending villagers from his three town centers and massing Casadors. So he's essentially forcing Noel's hand here. Yeah, th this was not very good control from the red player, unfortunately. He lost all of his Hussar and mm -hmm. is down pretty heavily on, on the Casador count. Have a look at the military units. It's 10 Casadors to 24 and 12 goons to 14, so... That's definitely leaning into Krad's favor. In the next cards that we see played, we see a Dragoon combat coming from Dulcrad as opposed to 8 Skirm, or sorry, 8 Casador coming from Null. He's going to go ahead and he's going to take this other uh, trading push as well. Yeah, this is not looking good for Red here. What do you think he can do to get back into this game? 
I'm not really sure there is a whole lot he can do. I mean, he's already lost a building. He's behind a military pop. Uh, his boom, he can't use that to recover because he is behind in villager population as well. It's uh, 55 to 42 in uh, dual cred's favor. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's it's really hard from this point. He might be able to get Position. back um, in the next battle if he has better micro. Yeah, that could could be true. Um, he's catching up on the army count somehow. He has managed actually to match. He's actually got more now. 27 Casadors to 22 in favor of Red. And 16 Dragoons to 17, so that's pretty even. So right now he's got the advantage here. The only thing going for green is this uh, Dragoon combat that he sent. But if you take a look at the, the cards that Red has sent, he sent both 8 and 7 Casadors here. Yeah, that's his way of getting cap back up. up. And, and, but look what's happened. Uh, he's taken all of the trading posts, and that's really huge here. Do you think we're going to see him uh, research Stagecoach? Yeah, definitely. He's probably already researching it. And uh, Noel does have a superior cast at Ormas right now. He's going to move yes, in. He does. He's got 10 more Casadors, and that's not little. That's quite a lot. And Dulcred knows it, so he's walking away, and he actually is losing Casador in doing so. He's pushing his villagers up hunts here on the right side. Uh, if he's not careful here, the red player, he could. That's why he's running back. He's afraid of the Minutemen pop or what? Or organ guns. Yep, and we do see Stagecoach come down. There. I would like to see him plop down that last TP. He doesn't have the wood for it quite yet. He yeah. will have that in shortly. Looks like he did prioritize sending Stagecoach over making that last TP. Which does make sense because you can always set those, uh, the trade post to wood so we can get it faster. Yeah. Let's see if he has done that. And he has. I think his wood just went up by 70 or something, 80, when the pass came by. So he should be getting it down. No, he's actually used it for some. I, I, he needed to make a house, as you can see here. Yep. And Noel is slightly uh, behind in a uh, Dragoon account. But for most of the game, it's been very consistent with Dulcred being about 7 to 9 uh, villagers ahead of Noel. Yeah, and what Noel's done here, he's actually, if you look at the shipments, he's traded Dragoon combat for 7 Castellors, which is really not worth it in the long run. Mm -hmm. And he, he has no TPs, uh, which is the main issue here. Absolutely, and the longer That's he goes... Yeah, the longer he goes, the more resources he's going to get in here. He could potentially go to the fourth age and upgrade everything. Or he could just mass some more army now, send some Mamelukes or organ guns. And if he has sent Mamelukes, five that. Mamelukes have arrived from Dulcred. Sorry, four minutes. Yeah, this I is the EP patch, so it is four oh, instead I, of five. I see them now, yeah. With some uh, veteran Hussar, I like that. Uh, accompanying the Mamelukes and Vet Hussar, that really kind of yeah. makes them stronger. It looks like he is going to move now. Yeah, and he has a three unit composition here, and uh, no one has a two unit composition, so yep. this fight could really go better for Green. Yep. He needs to get his Dragoons into the battle here. You know, he's kind of. He's afraid to get him picked up, so he's just... Yeah, if he can get the if he can get the Cesar and his members to connect with the Castro, that'd be very nice. Yeah, it looks like Noah has had to call Minutemen again here. Perhaps that's what uh, Dukai was trying to accomplish, get him to call Minutemen so he can back off and come back later when they have uh, have lowered. It's not a green fa in Green's favor to take this castle or battle like this, because he has less of them, but... Perhaps he was just trying to buy some time so he can get his Cesar to connect. Yeah. Looks like he's just uh, smashing his Mamelukes into the Dragoons here, just tanking, tanking all the damage from them, while his Dragoons deal tons of damage to the Red's units here. That's forcing him to kite back his Dragoons, which has given him time to take out his own. Yeah, and Noel's done a good job taking out the Mamelukes. There's only one left, and now it's zero left. But uh, last I do believe their damage is done, though. I mean, look at the Dragoon count. Uh, Noel only has three oh, Dragoons sure. left. 
and there are still Hussar in the battle as well, which are just gonna wipe up those uh, those Gatstar quite quickly. Yeah, and he at the same time he had three dragoons here idling about from villagers, which is really nice. That is very good. I mean, that, that's a substantial amount of villagers that are not doing anything right now. I mean, we do see good game come from Noel. That's the GG update the score here. Absolutely. One zero du dual crad. Very well played from dual crad. Um, going to go and check those texts complete and see what else uh, was made. Oh, that's right. I can't update after the game is over. That's some very nice gameplay coming from uh, from Dukred. Yeah, I, I would have to say that Noah looked a bit rusty. I know he's been on vacation. I think he was in India, so. Well, it could have been uh, what caused that. I mean, they a were a little bit rusty there. But they he's probably gonna use that game as a warm up and come back stronger here for the second game. Absolutely, and that does mean that uh, whose pick is it for the civilizations this next round? And the winner picks. Oh, that's right, winner picks. Right, so I'm curious to see what we're going to see from Dukrad on uh, Arkansas. Yes. Yes. Goes for Japanese. Perhaps we'll see France come from uh, from Noel. Which civilization do you think would uh, be best suited to counter Japanese? Well. I oh. think Russia is actually pretty good against... Instead, uh, he decides to go for another mirror. You'll see a Japanese mirror and both players have greened up. Okay, we've quickly gotten into the second game here. That's nice. It's going to be on Arkansas. Uh... Looks like it's going to be a Japanese mirror here. Wait till we load in. You can see the map? Uh, not quite yeah. yet. Yep, now I'm in. And this time on the left side in the color green we have our winner from the last game, Dual Crad. And on the right side we have no in the color red. Both players playing the Japanese civilization here. Absolutely, it's, gonna but it's not something we've seen often, as I mentioned before. So, not, at least not this tournament. Uh, I know a couple of tournaments ago it was quite uh, common to go Japanese mirror. See a consulate coming down from uh, Dukran immediately. He's going to get that up first. Yes, he is. Uh, that's actually pretty clutch that he's been gotten it down so fast. Uh, Noel's still not placed it yet. Maybe he's not even going to make it at all because he's making a trading post here. Very interesting. Are we going to see a, a good old-fashioned consulate rush here coming out from Noel? Or some kind of cheesy play? I think... Perhaps. We, I mean, we're already seeing a deviation here from the standard play. So. Do you think we're going to see a forward consulate come from him? Um, I think it's possible. Noah is picking up a 90 food treasure, which is pretty nice. I want to wait and see what, what his deck is. So then I can kind of tell if there's something fishy going on in his strategy. 50 coin being picked up by dual crad here, very nice. The lack of the consulate means that uh, if dual crad can get that Portuguese alliance formed quicker and he can get uh, Heavenly Kami sent for faster, then he will build a shrine boom more effectively. Yeah, that is true. Um, <coughs> I'm trying to observe here and see what's going on. Uh, Green just scouted uh, Red's base, but I don't think he was checking to see if there was a consulate there or not. He may not notice that he hasn't gotten one. Yeah, it, it looks a bit laggy. 
That's unfortunate. It might. Sometimes pausing that. Action. Sometimes pausing does get everything back on track. Let's hope so. I see some treasure contention down here. This uh, 90 food. We see the green explorer moving in, and he is. And oh, he went down first. So green actually managed to steal to credit stolen Noel's treasure, and Noel resigned. Is he resigned because of that 90 food? Interesting. I mean, is it going to be a rematch? Are we going to count that as a as a point? It is past the two minute um, mark. I'm not sure. I think it is past the two minute mark. So that would mean game number two goes to dual card by default. That's actually really um, surprising. I mean, always stealing the treasure is always nice and everything, but I don't think that would uh, make or break the game there. Perhaps he just realized that he was doing an unconventional strategy and it would not, uh, why not go through against a standard Japanese play? Or perhaps he quit because of the lag. Oh, he, he, t he told me that he, yeah, he, he lost that treasure because of the lag, and uh, he, he had cut a villager because it was depending on that treasure, and it ruined his build. All right, so are we can do a rematch on um, this matchup, or are we going to count that as no, a game? No, there's no rematch. That, that second game goes to dual crap. It was past the two-minute mark. That's unfortunate, but definitely, you can't definitely. Be in, a, in a tournament game like that after the two-minute mark. I mean, there was a bit of lag. I could see that, but still, you can't you can't just resign like that. Yeah, so I would have liked to see him continue playing. He, I mean, he's not even asking for a rematch. He knows. He knows it's over. Because this is, I mean, two zero. He's gonna have to. This is a best of five. So. Yeah, it, this is match point here for the Wolcrad, um, Pampa Sierra. Sierra. And I imagine the Cred's in a very comfortable position here because he knows that he has a lot of wiggle room. He could lose the next two games and still have a chance. He has to win the next two games straight, at least, to have a chance. And we see uh, France versus China. How do you feel about that matchup? Hmm. Given the recent changes, or well, not so recent, I think. China is in a better spot now than uh, France. You think so? Well, I mean, Ch uh, France has always been decent against China, but now with the uh, minus 100 food, food start for France, I think uh, China's uh, FF or semi FF or whatever they want to pull off is even stronger. Yeah, they absolutely. Have sort of more time. France is a little bit slower now, and uh, especially given that uh, this is a no TP map, uh, Pampa Sierras, there is no trading post on this map, and France uh, is a lot stronger with the trading post. And so is China for that matter, but I think France even more so. <laughs> Zulkrad is uh, asking for a second because he spilled his tea. Perhaps the spilled tea will tilt him. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping he gets a little bit tilted, not very much, so because you know that would be bad. But I want to see uh, at least the fourth game. Come on, yeah, absolutely, that, that would be very sem nice. Semi-finals. Yeah. And you can update the score. <laughs> it's two zero the duo crowd. Yep, absolutely. And here we are, spawning the north of the map. We have Noel playing as China and the South Dulcrad playing as France. I am kind of rooting for, for France here. I do like that uh, that civilization more than, than Chinese. Of course, it would yeah, be nice I'm to a, see a fourth game. <laughs> I'm a France fan myself. I don't really play much China, but I know they're pretty strong. And uh, one thing to mention on this map is you can sort of see there's three lanes, so it is quite a big map. This map is actually a lot better for Japan than. But another thing to mention are these uh, llama, 
that you see on the left side. So there's always a small contention here at the start to see who gets the most llama. I think the Let's llama um, will play more in favor of the Chinese uh, if they can manage to get more of them because, of course, they can task those to their, uh, their version of the houses. Yeah, exactly. They get, like, uh, free mini uh, livestock pens. And if you click the mil uh, economic units tab, I think it is, then you can kind of keep up with how many llama each player has. Which is currently uh, four to three. Exactly. And no, I also managed to pick up a goat. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you press Control shift f uh, you can see the fog of war. Oh, fantastic. I was it's wondering kind of nice. I was wondering how that worked. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to tell you that, and then it's not my bad. You learn something new every day. Go ahead and take a look at their decks. Click Dual Credit has not yet chosen his deck. Nor has Noel. Okay, so it's four to four to four on and the llama count, and there are no more left on the map. There is always a two sheep treasure though, which spawns in the middle somewhere. And Noel does sort of have the advantage <coughs> with the llamas because he did. I mean, he did get a goat, so he does have a, a livestock advantage there. Yeah, well, never mind. This map has no two sheep treasure. Oh yeah, there here it is. Yeah, he's picking that up right now. Usually it spawns in the middle, but now you see it here. It's a very nice treasure to pick up early in the game. Although he has not moved those sheep yet. Just kind of leaving them <laughs> sitting there. Yeah, they're just chilling. Oh, there they are. Now they're going back. Just some lazy sheep. He can see that Noah just picked up 90 coins, so he knows his hero must be somewhere off. Do you think he's going to go for this uh, 120 XP? Yeah, he is going for it. And uh, Noel's monk, his, or sorry, his disciple, does see what is going on, so we might see his explorer make a mad rush, and yeah, there his explorer is kind of running for that treasure, perhaps try to steal it. And of course, Dual Credit is backing off. It only has two wolves guarding it now, though, so would be fairly easy to pick up. And no market for friends here. Worth mentioning. Perhaps we'll get that and in uh, transition. 14, 14, yeah, he should definitely make it in transition. It's a 14 villager A job and no market. So it should, it should be pretty clean 14 villager A job. Some very standard uh, cards so far. Uh, three Crater Boy and uh, Northern Refugees. Exactly. Nothing fishy going on this game. No uh, trading post for Japan. <laughs> that would be very interesting if we saw a trading post go down, considering that would be actually a native post, and we have the Incas. Yeah, well, sometimes we do see that in this map. I don't know if you've seen the some other tournament matches on this map, but there has been some native play. And as we say that, what do you see there? We forgot to look at his deck. Uh, does he have any? <coughs> yeah, he does have uh, native treaties. <coughs> I suppose you will see that as one of his first cards played in a Colonial. Oh, he deleted it. I just it. need to go get a drink of water real quick. Take it away. He actually deleted his Inca settlement and... Uh, oh no, he re looks like he rebuilt it. But instead prioritized to get the... Uh, <coughs> the Mapuche or Mapuche. I bet y'all gonna make fun of me for uh, mispronouncing that. But he does go for this instead. And no, uh, sorry, uh, Dukrat is going to age up first. Yep, so of course, edging up with the 400 wood. Okay, I'm back. Which, yeah, uh, oh, in the time you're gone, you may have noticed that uh, Dukrat has actually taken two of the native trade posts. Yeah, that's because of the native treaty card. He wants to get both types, right? It gives you, uh, I think, uh, three units from each post, different post. But they have to be two different posts, right, for you to get. Yeah, absolutely. Use of that shipment. 
We see Noel, he uh, has placed his War Academy defensively behind his base with the Summer Palace up front. Yeah. With some Iron and Clubman. If you hold the Alt key over the, the native post, you can see what you can make from there. He does have some clubbing coming in right now, and those things have some very decent siege, a 30 siege attack each. I think both of these nuts are sort of pikemen. Right? Ooh, that's not good though, he has already lost one of them with these uh, Chukanu. Yeah, as soon as Noel saw this <coughs> trading post play, he, sh he should take Chukanu, which is the right move here. Absolutely. And he's also got a barracks down quite early. Looks like he's not uh, trying to go for a straight fast fortress here. Look at his resources. Yeah, absolutely. You think he may uh, decide to play this out in Colonial? Yeah, I think he was quite scared of this uh, siege uh, potential, so he's decided to. He needs some units here if he wants to stay alive. And he is sieging down this uh, native trade post in the center there. And Duca sees that instead of engaging those obviously because that is a whole lot of uh, Chukanus which will wreck this. He's going to go and he's going to siege down perhaps the Summer Palace or maybe he'll prioritize the Village or the War Academy. Ooh, and Duca does send three Hussar, which is probably the right answer with that mass of uh, Chukanus. And he has caused Null to call his irregulars. Yeah, can you get a Village down here? That it looks like he is, no At problem. he has to do some damage. Uh, he does have all his Chukanus flanking, and uh, Dukrad's natives are kind of caught in between. And he's only lost uh, two of these oh, fights so far. Three Hazar have connected with the Chukanus and are making them uh, go back, and it looks like Dukrad's going to take this fight. We see two more he's come in. He has five Hazar, he looks like he's dropped a stable. Uh, nice trap here uh, on Noel's part with the pikeman and the Minuteman. Absolutely. And uh, Noel Sentry. is going to repel this just fine. Yeah, it looks like he's managed to kill off most of the pikemen here. Uh, three Chuko and two, three pike coming out from the Summer Palace, which is really nice. It's really a question of whether or not that was worth it for Dulcrat. I mean, yeah, he took out a village and he took out some of the Chikanus, but he lost almost all of his natives. Uh, yeah. But, as well as five Hussar. Yeah. So yeah, well, I think the answer to your question is in the scores right now. If you look at them, I think the answer is no. <laughs> Although when you're making natives, your score always is you no. Know, it tends to be quite lower <clears throat> because they, they are not counted as military units. And the next card you sent it is for a career to boy. And uh, I don't know, uh, sending the native treaties probably was not the best decision because it didn't pay off. And so it was a waste of uh, colonial shipment that you could have sent perhaps for a career to boy or 700 gold or something of that nature. Five holes are coming out here, they could do quite a bit of damage. If he micros them correctly and pulls off the one with Heitman are focusing here, he doesn't need to. Looks like there's only one Heitman. He should wreck this Chinese army with no problem. But the <clears throat> the question is what's going to come out next? And Ooh, nine pikes. That's right, nine I think. Pikemen, yeah. Of course, Dukran is going to back off from that. And his score is actually ahead now. The, uh, well, let's have a look at the economic unit population. It looks quite even, but if you click on recalculated unit population, just click on that graph, you can see it's in favor of France because, uh, of course, the CDB are worth 1.25 villagers. So, so he is ahead economically. Uh, but he doesn't have any more units left, does he? Yeah, and it looks like he's going to lose both of these Hussar down here. Oh. Interesting to see that uh, Noel pulled those back. He had only one more shot to get in, and he would, or rather, strike to get in, and he would have taken out one of those Hussar. So very good raiding. There's so much action going on here, it's kind of hard to keep up. There was another raid up, uh, up the right, and he, he split those as well. Killed one villager, and then tried to chase off another villager that got inside the town center. 
<clears throat> but it looks like he's gonna have to run away because of these these pikemen. Yeah, absolutely, and we do see uh, the next card from Nola's diplomatic intrigue. Yeah, but he didn't have a consulate down yet, so he's just now building that with five villagers. It is gonna take time for him to ally with one of the uh, the civilizations in the consulate. And so far, no, uh, Dulcrat has not made anything but Azar. It looks like he's done with his natives. Uh, doesn't want to use those any longer. So it's kind of a waste of 400 wood and a card to lose all those natives right off the bat. Yes. He, he's putting down I would two, expect to see two forward barracks going down Yeah, right go here. ahead. And what were you saying you'd expect to see? I would expect to see, uh, as I say, that he does ally with the British, uh, some red coats here from, from China. Uh, Dukat's doing a very good job of raiding up here while uh, Noel was pushing down onto his barracks. Yes, he is. He's keeping China busy here. Um, but at the same time, uh, he's going to lose his two barracks potentially here. But there is a lot of siege potential here. Oh, definitely. At well, least pikemen. Uh, but look at the uh, recalculated unit, uh, economic unit population. Uh, all the raiding he's done has put him quite ahead in uh, population. He has seven more villagers worth of economy. Yeah, exactly. So if he cleans up this Chinese army, he's gonna be in a very good spot here. The China is nowhere near aging up, so... Yeah, he does have eight musketeers that he's using to lure away those uh, Chikanus and he's bringing in those Hussar to make contact with them. And it looks like he's gonna be able to manage to get one or two of them before they get away. Oh no, he actually did not manage to get any of them. Uh, these musketeers can obviously... Yeah, he it's actually good that he lost his barracks in a way, because now he can get us around on his army, but... Mm. Uh, Those red coats wow, make these contact. red coats coming in from the back, that is just so brutal. Those are, uh, are like better and musketeer or better. But they are going down pretty fast. Um, yeah, I would say this fight has gone in favor of Noel here. Definitely, and he's going to lose uh, that market as well. He lost both barracks. Uh, eight crossbows coming out now. He sh could have maybe waited for those eight crossbows. Cause, yeah. I mean, if you're going to lose both of your barracks, why fight? What do you get out of it? Absolutely. For the eight crossbows, then fight. And he hasn't only lost those. He's also lost six SR and eight uh, musketeers. So two. Uh, that's a lot of resources lost. Which the score, of course, is reflecting right now. Wow, but look at these huge... Raids coming in here from Green. This is really what's keeping him in the game right now. Nice. It's only these raids. He's doing an outstanding job of raiding. Uh, it must be really annoying uh, having to deal with this. Thankfully, he does have another batch of red coats coming out just in time to catch these before they kill any more villagers. He can't really afford to lose any more villagers here. Mm -hmm. Raiding is the right uh, decision, I think, because it's keeping Noel distracted. He can't fully commit to his base because uh, he, if he looks away for more than a second, another villager goes down because of his raiding. And actually, if those cavalry were to make contact up here, look at how many villagers are on this mine. Yeah, I think he know, know, knows that, so he's plopping down a village just as we say that, to keep them safe. And no is <laughs> aging up now. He is headed towards the fortress age. Wow, he has managed to gather the resources for the age up. I really think he he couldn't do it, but he's pulled it off. And as we all know, China in the third age is really strong. Do you think we're going to uh, see France go to age up as well? He does have uh, yeah, 1,600 food in his bank right now. Yeah, he's floating 1,600 food, uh, trying to gather the gold. He's, he's waiting for his 700 gold shipment. With no trading post, though, it's kind of, it takes a while to, you know, get your shipments in. Absolutely. These uh, fortress civilizations do typically play better on maps that have GPs because of that uh, XP income. And, and Noel's unit composition is actually pretty solid here. Redcoat, Pikes, and Chukunus. What, what can you do against that right now? Nothing. Yeah, he could have pushed now, actually. What do you think uh, the first card he's going to send in Fortress will be? China? Yeah. Probably... He just managed to take out one... It's hard to say. Maybe four Iron Flails or... Or five Major Hammers. 
something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Duke actually managed to kill one of the villagers on that mine, and more importantly, he has idled them all, so none of them are gathering at this moment. They did just now pop back out. I would have liked to see him kind of stick around a little bit longer, just keep those idle until uh, Noel's army caught up. And he actually managed to get another villager down here at the mine at his base. These raids are just yeah, destroying. And there we see the iron fells, flails coming out. <coughs> I mean, that is all the friends can do right now, is just raid. We kind of buy them time. That's exactly he's what he needs. He's, and he's almost aged he's up. He's about two-thirds of the way. And Noel is pushing into his base right now. But you know what I like about this map is if you look around, look at where Francis' villagers are. Oh yeah, they are. They're pretty far out. So, and what is China doing? He's pushing, pushing into his base. There's really nothing here except houses. Houses will damage him. As you can see, he is housed right now. Oh, that's, well, that's about all China can do, really. It's forcing him onto, forcing him onto wood, so he can get those houses back up. Which, of course, that gathers more slowly. He puts those red coats into combat. into hand combat. All he has to really do is micro back this cab and use the crossbow and the minimum to focus on the red coats. Yeah, those red coats are really doing a lot of damage, killing off all of the hussar here. This Only uh, crossbows left. This is looking really good for wow. Noel. And even with all those raids that are going on, Noel has a 41 villagers to dual cards 45, and that is good game. So game number three goes to Noel, so we will see a fourth game, which is very nice. We will. that card? I was looking... Oh, we, we missed that. I was wondering what that card was. He sent new army to uh, China. All Chukonus transform into Archibusiers, and all Quang Pikemen transform in into Changado Swordsmen. So that's what had happened there. We we kind of missed that in the middle of the battle. All of these Chukonus turn into Archibusiers, and his Pikemen into Changados. That's actually really an interesting card to play, considering he had that mass. I think that yeah. was the right uh, choice to make. That was very interesting there from Noel. <laughs> wow. I thought there was something fishy, because I looked down and I see all these Chengdao swordsmen sieging the barracks and then I look at his shipments and he hasn't sent it. <laughs> I was wondering how he managed to get so many so quickly. Yeah. It's always nice seeing those interesting strategies being played in tournaments. Things a yeah, little bit out of the norm. Well played there by no, definitely. Pulling one out of the hat there. That just shows how strong China is. is they can lose about 10 villagers from raids and still be strong enough to win the game with just a simple card. Absolutely, Dukrat, uh, he's playing Portuguese now. So... So this is the Baja California. The next map is Manchac, if it gets to that, that will be the last map. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this map, but it has water on both sides. Oh yeah, yeah. So I've played a few games on this one. So you know how good water play can be. Absolutely, this is a really it's good. Such a large map as well. Very good for Portuguese and Nolts has to counter with uh with Spanish. Exactly. Probably the best civilization suited to countering Portuguese. And of course, this is a match point yet again. Nolts gonna have to pull out two more wins if he takes the series. Your ping is going uh, red yellow right now. Yeah, I was loading a web page here. Wow, that's right. <coughs> yeah, it's gone back to, to yellow green. It's soon to be green, I'm sure. <coughs> Are they ready up? I'm trying to... Yes, everyone's ready up. Just wait on you. I wanted to turn on my second monitor so I could watch gotcha. the second screen, the Twitch stuff, but I can't. 
I do have uh, I do have the Twitch open on my on my phone, kind of keep an eye on chat, see if anyone has any specific questions for us. Yeah, that's always good to have. They're saying that if uh, France had put Kurt Boy on wood and slammed down three production buildings, that they would have been able to win that. If they had done what now? Put sent on wood. Yeah, and put down three buildings production buildings. Basically, if he had put down more mass. Well, he he could have micro a little bit better against those red coats. They really slaughtered his hussar. But he, yeah, it, it was it was a tough position to be in. They're also know. suggesting that if he had used his creator boy uh, in the fight a little bit more, that that would have helped a lot as well. Possibly, possibly. Turn on the fog of war here. Control Alt F. And getting into this fourth game now, the score is uh, two to one in favor of uh, dual crad which did spawn on the right side of the map and ba this is Baja California and the color green playing as the Portuguese our hero <laughs> our set leader better said and on the left side of the map we have Noel in the color red playing as Spain here how do you feel about this matchup I feel that it can go either way um, I really think Spain has a small window actually to win this game and that is uh, as soon as they age up to third age go for a timing with the Falconets I mean if Portuguese somehow manages to survive all of that Spain is pretty screwed to put it that way because Portugal will have a few town centers up he could potentially be on water and his economy is just gonna get way out of hand. Absolutely. Spain to handle. The scout treasure is a very strong treasure, and it's actually not been discovered by either player yet. It's only gathered by, uh, or sorry, only guarded by one bear. Yeah, well, both players went for an early trading post. It was a 200 wood start, so looks like uh, both we're going now gonna see some treasures. Yeah, both going for the uh, the safe play, going for the one on the end rather than the one for the middle. You have the fog of war on. Uh, actually, I'm kind of cycling it on and off. Yeah, I was going to mention that he that treasure you were talking about. He didn't. He just missed it. Very, very close to get to seeing that, but just just outside his path. And he is working on this. Uh, 150 coin treasure, which is a very strong treasure, but I believe that Noel, uh, he can see it. He does know what's going on. He's going to try to steal that treasure. Wow. How, he's kind of standing nearby. Uh, uh, Just waiting for that. Waiting uh, for him to kill this last bear. Can he get it? Can, oh, they went down oh, a very this similar is so times. Close. This is so close. Oh, Noel did not get it. I don't know if it. he should have canceled that. Do you think he... I don't know. I think he might have. I think he might have actually had that, but instead he's going to go into hand combat. He's going to snare this explorer and force him back <laughs> to his town center. Yeah, I'm not sure you should have canceled the animation. I wasn't sure who was going to get that. It was so close. And Dukrat's first card that he played in a Discovery was Schooners, and so we're going to see some water play from him. Oh, he's just going to use all of his hunts. We forgot to check the hunts. Um, Oh shit, I didn't do that right. <laughs> it was a valiant effort. These sounds don't look uh, too terrible, he has. Okay, so Noel's complaining about his hunts. Uh, they are kind of far away. But similarly, I mean, look at uh, Dukrat's hunts. Yeah, but I'm talking about his uh, second hunt mainly. Because his first hunt's always there, but his second hunt... Yeah. He's asking if there should be one in the back. Yeah. Two great hunts are similarly far, far away. Yes. Another... No, there's no... But don't tell them there's... We can't really tell the players where their hunts are. Mm -hmm. so just I'm whether or not it's fair. Doesn't have one in the back, because neither player really has one in the back. Yeah, information like that can be useful. We try not to tip them off. Yeah. Um. Actually, 
if Noah hurts this and he's your audio is cutting out just a tad bit oh no can you hear me now yeah I can hear you let, let me know if it gets worse no we will do we'll do it might be discord He has played schooners, but I do not see a dock down yet. Perhaps he's going to wait uh, till transition. Yeah, he is edging up now. Where do you think uh, Portuguese is going to place his uh, his town center? Let's have a look at his deck here. He does have a water card, so I would suspect him to go along the coastline. Maybe here would be a good spot. Definitely, definitely. There are a lot of resources in the water here, so... Probably the best play that Portuguese can make. Or well, you could just go on the back here, it's kind of safer. Okay, he's getting a dog down straight away, so let's see if he makes some walls to go with it. And something we failed to notice was that Noel actually did manage to take that uh, Kickaboo Scout treasure. Oh yeah, I wasn't paying attention. So he asks a native scout out for working for him. That's going to be very handy here. Scouting the dog straight away. So he knows so he what knows to expect. Let's check his deck. Does he have a... Uh, he does have two caravels and a frigate in his deck, so he is prepared for this uh, this water play. And he actually does have schooners in his deck as well, so we might see him uh, send that as one of his next cards, perhaps. Of course, uh, Spanish does get faster shipments, so he could afford to do that, potentially. Okay, I, I have to really pay attention to what Spain does here because it can go really fast. How do you feel about this uh, that town center placement though? He didn't really move it very much. They're actually rather no, close to each other. I, I don't. I personally don't really like it because it's not even close to his first town center really. Mm -hmm. and, uh, let me I just mean, if you're gonna put it there, or put it cl closer to your first town center, or just put it by the coast where you can protect it with your boats. Yeah, it should be close to the coast. I mean, it might only protect like those two fishing boats and nothing further out. And he has put a dock on both sides of the the map. And I'm, I'm curious as to whether or not uh, Noel has scouted this dock. Wow, look at... Yeah, this is what I wanted to see from the Spanish player. He's Ooh. gonna go for a very aggressive timing here. Uh, gonna try to age up straight away here. Already has the resources for it. He's gonna click up in 3, 2... Yep, there he out. is. And he has his uh, forward outpost here, so we're going to probably see uh, I gauge up with cannons as the first shipment straight up. That's what I would suspect. He's going to take down this, uh, this Portuguese economy before he can even really get it started, which is very nice. I would really like to see two caravels come out here soon uh, and contest the water because Dulcrat doesn't really have that town center close enough to protect those fishing boats. Yeah, that is true. Could send two caravels. Putting down a barracks. Pretty forward up. And he has made uh, five more uh, uh, war dogs here, the Spanish player, whose name is Night Scream. Interestingly. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Very interesting name. wonder what uh, the Portuguese player's explorer is named. Diego Fernandez. <laughs> That's just the standard. Nothing special yeah, there. <laughs> there we see the... Wow, he's actually sent pikes. He sent eight pikes here. I know what's going on. He, he He's just going to go for a massive uh, pikeman cannon timing here. That's a lot of siege, potentially. You think he just wants to get down that uh, second town center as soon as possible. And he does have a shipment ready for Forger's Edge as well, so I wonder what that F. You think it's going to be the uh, cannons that he's going to ship first? Yeah. I don't like that the Warcraft doesn't have Colonial Militia in his deck. I mean, playing against Spain, you really should have that card. Especially as Portugal trying to take the water. He's going to take down that stable right Oof. away. And he has hit up with uh, more pikemen following in. 
This is really nice. This is looking very nice for, for Nolo. He has a five reinforcing musketeer coming in as well. And of course, his war dog, and he's using that kick of his scout uh, in stealth mode to keep an eye on what units are being produced to, in case he does have to fall back. Minutemen do get called, and he's going to use his war dogs to take those out. That's actually really nice. His war dogs take them out very effectively. Yeah. They are very good at snaring, like, uh, um, Minutemen. And pikemen, uh, they do beat musketeer if they can get them into hand combat. And since he just has a spear and mass, he can just kind of run up to those with their superior speed and catch them. Six musketeers out for Portugal here. Will it be enough to hold this? Like, Honestly, I don't think so. Out, out now. Yeah, with this cannon's coming in. I think he should have kind of waited for those cannons. I mean, he's lost most of his army here. I'm not sure this is the way to go. But Dukrat has nothing that he can use to counter this cannon right now. Oh, he has a musketeer. And he's dropping a stable in the back of his base right now. And I don't believe that is within the line of sight of, uh, of Noel, so he doesn't know that it's going. Yeah, if Dukrat uh, kills this cannon, it's pretty much game over from here. And he's, he only has All of these three. Are he only has three pikemen left, he has cannon and skirmisher, so he has no real anti-cav. And if that stable can get up and he can ship, okay, he sent 12 pikemen, so there's that anti-cav. Definitely needs that. And he's using those skirmishers to kind of go forward and uh, chase down those musketeers. And the town center was focusing down the, the falconet, left it with seven hit points. And so he pulls that back, that's really nice. Yeah, but it's pretty much useless now. It may get one more shot up on something. He is bringing it back in. He probably should have waited, I think, until that town's in. Okay, yeah, it went down. So yeah, it's going to yeah, actually get more yeah, than one I, shot I in. I think Dualcraft should have sent it here just, just to go for cannons here. Yeah. Could have done it. Villagers do beat cannons in hand combat, so it's a... Uh, yeah, they do. Because he only had a few skirmishers here. But I guess he would have probably lost most of them to the pike now. Yeah, absolutely. And we do see some, uh, some grassman wind popped out. Will it be enough, though? I really do like his position. Those, Three uh, hosts are coming in from out of nowhere here. He's definitely losing one of those cannons, and the next one will probably go down as well. He's losing both of yeah, those cannons. Both of those are gone. Sure. I think that's game over, right? I mean, there's no way... Spain can win from here. Yeah, and, if, and look at the economic unit population. Um, Dukrat's done a very good job of continuing to maintain boat production. Oh, Noel does send a frigate though, and uh, oh, he doesn't doesn't play out. <coughs> Which he uh, does, but he, he 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 realizes it's just nothing he can do really against this boom. So game number three goes to Dukrat, winning him the best of five series. Yeah, congrats to Dukrat. Advancing to the finals, uh, we have our winner here. That is dual crad. It's very, very nice. Some very well played Take games. Get out, Noel. Three to one. Yeah. I'm curious as to how much work this frigate would have been able to do, considering that the town center is down, and so uh, it doesn't really have anything protecting your shores. But considering how far ahead the economic population is, he didn't really have anything he could follow that up with. Well, dual crad had the two. <coughs> caravels he could ship and Garrus and his uh, fishing boats inside the dock. Yeah, absolutely. Caravels do beat one frigate. Sure, he would have been fine. And he's also got the other side of the water here. Yeah. We did get to see a fourth game though, so that is very nice. Yeah. That was fun. I enjoyed casting with you. Uh, you as well. It was definitely an exciting experience watching some... Uh, a little bit higher PR players and get to cast those as opposed to uh, the typical lieutenants and master sergeants that I typically cast on my channel. Yeah, tournament matches are always fun to cast. Especially when you see these uh, builds that aren't really standard and they do pay off against standard builds. Yeah, that's true. So, thanks ladies and gentlemen for watching the semifinals. Casting uh, this match has been Myself, Arrogant OP, and Sight. Yep, absolutely. This was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you for watching, and uh, tune in next time.